Hey there, folks. Welcome back to the channel. So let me see. What can I coach you all up on today financially? Hmm. Let's pick something random. I got it. Credit score. How to achieve an 800 credit score. And you can tell it was completely random based on the screen. Not rehearsed at all. So I am going to take a detour from the dividend uh, topics today. Um, I hate to do that because those videos are doing so well. I've done like two or three dividend videos now and they all do great. Never realized there was such a following for dividends out there. Uh, but I'm going to keep on. I've got a lot more content on that. I'll probably reveal everything I've made in dividends at some point. Um, and I got a lot of other stuff I've been keeping on hold for a little while here. Um, I don't want to post every day. I want to try to pace it out. Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays mainly, um, sometimes on a weekend. But anyway, um, I've been wanting to do a video on this for a while, and uh, this is just completely off the cuff, not inspired by any other videos out there, of course. Um, but this is something that, you know, when I, when I do these videos and I kind of give informal advice or education, um, it's good, it's better when it comes from a position of expertise. And this is a subject that I happen to know something about. Well, as in everything I talk about, but this one, I really, I mean, I've, I've done this, I've lived this, so I'll go into my strategy today. And the funny thing is, of all the questions I get, whether it's, how do I start investing? How do I make better returns investing? How do I beat the market? What do I do with, you know, $10,000, 20000 50000 The number one question I get is not any of those things, but it's, how do I improve my credit? lower my interest rates, get out of debt, and raise my credit score. That, though, that's the number one topic that I get. So with that, let's dive in today. Is that how it goes? Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm going to tell you all how to achieve an 800 credit score. Now, for me to do this, this took me probably six or seven years. And there's a lot to this. So to unpack this, coming out of the Great Recession, credit got a lot tighter. And I know for me, I know my generation was bit by that um, primarily. It was hard for me to get my very first credit card. I would apply for different cards. I would even apply for a gas station card and I would get rejected. And of course now, like with the way gas prices are, I, if I was myself back then, I, I, of course I would get rejected because they're like, oh, you know, gas is like $7 in LA. Funny thing is gas prices in LA are the price of a good credit score, almost like seven ninety five dollars at one station. But anyway, um, so as you can see here, I'm revealing my own uh, credit scores here. Now, this is Credit Karma. There are two main um, credit agencies that calculate your score that Credit Karma uses. You've got TransUnion and Equifax. And you'll notice there's about a 17 point difference or 16 point, um, no, 17 point difference between uh, the two of them. And there's reasons for that because they weight things differently. So let's dive into the TransUnion one first. Now, what I do, um, my strategy is not, oh, it's going to do this to me again, darn it. Oh, well. Hold on. This site is glitchy. Okay, so it's logged me out like four times even before I started this video. Stick with me. Okay, so let's try this again. So let's go into the TransUnion one. Now, my advice on this is going to be different than it's this is not your template pathway to achieve an 800 credit score because I don't use credit cards the way that the vast majority of the population uses them. I use them for cash back mainly. And I made a joke in one of my early videos that somebody asked me, what's your interest rate? And I say 5%. And they say, how do you get an interest rate so low? And I'm like, 5%. I thought 5% was good. I thought that was high because that's what I'm getting paid at like rotational categories, like restaurants, gas stations, cable bills, things like that. That's mainly what I use them for. I don't run them up. I don't uh, just go have fun with them and run them up. I'm... And I guess I'm the exception, not the norm. And I'm not saying any of this to brag, but I'm very disciplined. Like if I have the money to spend on something and I have the credit limit, like I would hate to see what the average person would do with my credit limit. They would be in so much debt. It wouldn't even be funny. And I'm not saying any of this to brag. Any of you can do this. Just so you know, 
any videos of mine that you watch, this is not like extraordinary, like exclusive knowledge that the rich like lock away in a castle somewhere. Any of you all can do this. Anything I've done, any of you all can do. That's why I started this channel to help mentor and coach other people on how to do these things. You just got to want to, and you got to try. Those are really the two things, desire and effort. It sounds cliche, but it's true. Those are the two, those are the two ingredients. So anyway, uh, as you can see, this is the um, fluctuation in the score going back to the beginning of the year. It's dropped a bit. And what happens every time I put like a major expense on a card, I pay it off immediately. Um, but the score will drop. And this goes back to what I was saying about the 08 recession coming out of that. They really tightened the reins on credit. So like you could put one of my favorite jokes, like you could buy a, a rug or something for like a hundred bucks at Walmart. And uh, I actually did that one time when I first, when I got my first place and my credit score dropped because I carried the balance. Cause this is what I do. And this is tip number one. When you buy stuff on a credit card, never ever pay interest. And here's the thing. This is basic rule. Number one, if you can't afford it, don't buy it, okay? Even if your credit card, even if your limit's there, if you have a $5,000 limit, it doesn't mean you wanna run it up because here's what happens. If you have, just say a $500 limit, we'll take like my first credit card, they gave me a $500 limit. Why? Because I had no you know, established credit history. I was considered a risk. Even though I had the money in the savings account that I had with that same bank to cover it, they said, okay, give them a $500 limit. And this is where I had to learn all this on my own, because when I first had that card, I thought, oh, you want to max that out? No, that's a bad thing. Because say you have 450 out of 500, that's a 90% credit utilization. Wow, how did he just do that math? And it said, well, it's actually easy. Just multiply by two. That's 900, 1,000, 500, 1,000, multiply by two. See, easy, easy math. The coffee helps sometimes. Um, but yeah. A high credit utilization is not uh, what you want. And I'm going to teach you in this video several different hacks to avoid a high credit utilization ratio. One of them I'll just go ahead and throw out there now. Um, you can, and this is where when you're making effort, when you want something and you become resourceful, this is where, like the saying goes, luck favors the ready. Or another version of the saying, the harder you work, the luckier you get. This is one of the things you can use in your favor, because when you're trying to build the score, and I figured this out on my own too, um, you want to just go on the website, even call, like whatever, there's like multiple ways to do it, but ask them to increase your credit limit. So if you get a card, say you get your first credit card and uh, it's $500 and you only spend, just spend like 20 bucks on it, keep that utilization very low. And if you're tracking with me, what would that credit, what, what would that credit utilization be? 4%, right? 20 of 500, right? Just multiply by two. Anyway, um, so yeah, keep that low. And then once you've spent a couple months at that limit, ask them to raise your limit. Ask them to double it. They'll ask you for some updated information. Just update it. And a lot of times when you're good at that limit, they'll raise it. I've had cards that they've doubled my limit just without even having to call. I just go on the website and request it and boom, it's done. All they can do is tell you no. Never hurts to ask, right? So anyway, let's really get into the bulk of what I want to talk about here. So there's six major factors that influence your credit score here. Um, payment history is weighted among the highest. Uh, credit utilization, which we just talked about derogatory marks on your account, the average age of your credit cards, total accounts, and hard inquiries. Now, hard inquiries, this is kind of where they get you because you're going to have to have them because when you apply for credit cards, they're going to pull your credit. And that results in a hard inquiry. Now, you can try to fight it and you can try to say, hey, I didn't want them to do this. But here's the thing. They fall off after two years. So just let them fall off. You're going to have some pain early on to build up. You know, everybody's going to start out low. But within at least two years, you can have a decent credit score. And by the way, to get a mortgage, 
if you're just doing an FHA loan, I had a question from a subscriber about this, so I'll tie this in. You don't really need that high of a credit score. I think my first mortgage, which I got that FHA loan on, which in the video I did talking about Dave Ramsey's strategy about paying off your house early, I thought it was stupid to get an FHA loan, but actually they work for a lot of people's situations. So um, I don't want to bash it too much. It may work. I actually may do another one. Like if I get a rental property, I may do another FHA loan. And I have another video coming on that um, about a real estate blunder that I made that you can all learn from. And the gist of it, I mean, when I had my first townhome, I should have kept it as a rental property. That's the gist of it. And I'll show you the numbers and get into all that. That'll be really exciting, especially for those who like real estate. It's a it's another passive income video. So I hope the dividend crowd likes that too. Passive income, right? Because that's all dividends, real estate, that all ties in. But anyway, so the hard inquiries, as you can see, I have eight of them because why I apply for a lot of credit cards because I am a big fan of the credit churning strategy. I do so many of them. They actually cut me off. I think you can do like four or five a year if you finagle it. Um, and each one gives you maybe between two and 300, sometimes four or 500 if you can stretch it. Um, but they'll cut you off. If you open too many lines of credit within a year, they'll cut you off. Uh, so you don't want to do that. But I have eight hard inquiries and they fall off every two years. So that's not really a big waiting. Total accounts, you see 47 here. Uh, that includes open and closed accounts. Because like I said, I'm opening them a lot and I let them close them. If I just stop using one, they close it. Like uh, there's two that I'm going to actually close right here. Uh, let's see. Um, the Spirit card and then this uh, Amex card. I'm not a big Amex fan. Uh, I had a had a horror story with them. They tried to they tried to screw me out of points on one of their deals. There's a website called slickdeals.com. And uh, we had to, needless to say, we had to do some battle. And uh, they had to settle with me, but they only gave me like a fifth of my points. And I've had a bad taste in my mouth ever since then. So, and this card here, this is the Amex, um, the blue cash card, which you get like the 3% at like grocery stores, which this is garbage by now because you can get like the Verizon card gives you 4% back. Some cards give you 5%. So I would say, throw this out. See, it just hit the floor and it's going to be gone soon because I only held it because my last $25 reward, they make you, this is what really ticks me off. They make you wait uh, until you get a reward in a $25 increment to cash it in. So I had to spend more money on this card that I hate already so that I could get that $25 reward. Once I got that, cashed it out, and then I'm going to close that one out. This spirit card, actually, they gave you, they gave me like a thousand um, dollars worth of, uh, or was it a thousand or 500? I can't remember. I think it equates to like, uh, it's something like 10, like a penny per so many, there's some conversion rate, but I want to say it translated like maybe $500 worth of free flights. Um, 40,000 points basically, but the airlines can jerk you around because they can raise the rates. And, um, I'm actually taking a vacation in May and I'm using that up and that card's history. So I'll be churning to another airline, probably United or so, uh, but we'll see. But uh, I think Spirit and I are done. Although, I mean, they still do have cheap flights and stuff, but I'm getting off topic. Okay, total accounts, like I said, includes uh, open and closed, which I had a Target card. I saw it just was closed. I don't even pay attention to this a lot of times. Um, and if I don't keep refreshing, this stupid site will kick me out. Um, yeah, okay, so see 25 open accounts, 22 closed accounts. Uh, you wanna have a deep, a deep credit profile, meaning you have a lot of accounts. You want like ideally a mortgage, a car loan, which I had a car loan on here, but I paid it off. Um, it was only like 2.8% or something, probably I think lower than that, but I paid it off. Um, and then you want to have multiple lines of credit. The deeper the profile, the better. Uh, let's see here. It's got me at 0% credit usage, but it's, I think I'm like one or 2% really. Um, what happens, like I said, thinking of the concept of numerator versus denominator that they teach you like in you know fifth grade or so. Um, basically, if you're spending $500 a month on credit cards, that's your numerator. That's the guy at the top of the line here if you're dividing. Uh, and at the bottom, say your credit limit 
say you can increase it from 20,000 to 50,000. So the higher that denominator is, the lower when you divide, the lower that that result is going to be, right? So here's how it works. If you only have like a $5,000 credit limit and you spend $500, then uh, you're using 10%. But if you can raise that limit to 50, you can drop your usage to 1%, which will help your credit tremendously. So let's see here. Do I want to, I don't want to show too much personal stuff here, but I've already showed you my credit uh, ratings. Um, okay. Yeah, there. So I said 500 because that's usually my rotational credit balance. And what I do, um, I pay the statement balance in full every month. So I have one home loan and I have $583 of credit card balances and they never accrue interest. I never pay a penny in interest on a credit card. Rather, they pay me. And all of you all can do this. I don't want anybody to leave this video thinking, oh, look at this, what he's talking about, like we can't do, like we have to run up our credit cards for our fun stuff and our cruises and our concerts and stuff like that. I don't mean that in anybody in particular. That's just, believe it or not, uh, a very wide demographic of our society uses credit cards for that. So that doesn't narrow it down to like any one person. That's like a demographic as a whole, right? So anybody can do this though you just it just takes discipline and desire what did i say at the beginning of the video desire and effort right those are the two key things uh okay so let's see of this one i have uh two i, I actually have three u.s bank cards now uh because one that i got that i did a little short video on let me see if i have it around here real quick hold on um yeah i'll be right back I did this in one of my first videos. You can tell this subject really excites me. Uh, this is what I call the starting lineup. So there's three US bank cards in here. This is the US bank cash plus. This one gives you rotational categories. Um, you can put your phone bill on it for like 5% back. You can put uh, fast food restaurants, which there's a lot of things that are considered fast food restaurants. Um, that you get 5% back on. You can put your internet bill on there, streaming credits, get 5% back. The other one, uh, and this isn't an advertisement, they're not sponsoring me. I wish they were. US Bank, if you're listening, sponsor me. Uh, the US Bank Go card, this is for restaurants that are like not fast food, but like sit down places, 4% back. And these give you like a two to $300 cash back credit uh, just for opening them. And then uh, Wells Fargo Propel, this one gives you like a $200 uh, cash back bonus just for opening it and spending $1,000. But this one, this is the one I did one of those short videos on in the car. And uh, this is the US Bank Connect card, Altitude Connect card. This one in point equivalents is $500 back on $2,000 spent. So that's awesome. That's like a 25% rate of return. And it gives you cash back on other stuff like rentals and travel and all of that. So that's kind of the idea. That's mainly what I use credit cards for. That's why in my last short video I did, um, when that goofy bank teller asked me why I don't use my debit card, I don't use a debit card because they don't give me anything back. I put everything on credit cards and I have auto pays set up. So all my bank statement is gonna show is auto pay, auto pay for this and that. That's where my bills go. And I wish, I wish everything could be on a credit card. Like I'd put my mortgage on a credit card if I could and get like 5% back, that would be great. But yeah, what actually threw that bank teller off, this is a SunTrust debit card and SunTrust merged with Truist. So this is obsolete now. So throw that one out too. We'll add to the pile on the floor. So uh, this is fun. Literally, we're literally credit churning, get it? Okay, so those are, I've got $1 on a card. What is this? I don't want to. I'll have to look into that later. Oh, I know what that is because I have Amazon Music and I get like the dollar student rate. I, I think that's what that is. Uh, and then, so yeah, these are my other ones here. So you get the idea there. So let's go back. Credit Karma is a little glitchy, but I like how it doesn't uh, reveal too much like personal stuff. 
And then they suggest cards to you. Like, look at this one, the GM card, a 10,000 point welcome bonus. That probably translates to hundred dollars though. Rewards rates, four X to seven X points per dollar. That's funny. Yeah. GM has their own like uh, credit union and uh, that's another rabbit hole. We'll go down later. It's in one of those financial documentaries. Uh, anyway. Okay, so let's see. So we covered two of the six factors, I think. Payment history, that one's pretty basic. Just make sure you pay off the statement balance every month. Pay it on time. Set it up for auto pay. You never have to worry about it. Now, what some of these credit card companies do that I think is shady, I think this is very shady, um, they check to see if you're really paying attention. And I've had this happen to me and I've actually had two or three of them try to bill me interest. And I call immediately and I have that crap reversed. Cause like I said, I ain't paying no interest on a credit card. I refuse to, I want it to come to me. I'm not paying it to them. And I don't say that to brag. I mean, sincerely, anybody can do this. Like there's tons of stuff that I've like done without as far as fun in order to get to this level. So that's what it takes really. So as far as like paying off your cards, it's, that's pretty basic. You just, uh, you just pay it, you know, when it's due, uh, never make the minimum payment. You'll be perpetually in debt if you make the minimum payment on your credit card. And a lot of these things, I don't know why I know generally society is just not financially savvy. Like I say, financial education is not really taught in schools, but some of this like conventional wisdom, I don't know why it's so conventional. I don't know why people think, oh, just make the minimum payment. You're accruing interest massively. Like if you've seen my compound interest video or my dividend snowball video, like that snowball effect is literally, instead of that going to you, like you're snowballing your creditors. And that's not, that's not what you want to do. You want those snowballs to come to you, not snowball the compound interest to the creditors. But that's what you're doing. Like you hear about the top 1% and wealth transfers and all that. Well, there you go right there. Like if you have a lot of credit card debt, you're literally transferring wealth into the hands of the top 1%. So there, you didn't know you were doing that. You thought it was like, oh, it's just the system. Well, you're actually, it's a direct payment transfer into the hands of the top 1%. Every dollar in credit card debt, it's like, here, I'll try to do a magic trick with a dollar. So it's like, okay, here, top 1%. I'm poor. I want to be poorer. So here, here is a wealth transfer to you. You're already in the top 1%, but you need more. So here, and that's not what you want to do. With that being said, okay, so payment history, like I say, set up the auto payments and take notes on this video. If you need to watch this twice or three times, it would really be good for you. And it would be good for me too, as far as watch time. So please, by all means, watch this multiple times, watch it on 2X, take notes, get out a notepad. Um, you know, get a drink, get some coffee and sit down and take notes because there's a lot of valuable information in here. So make sure that you pay off the statement balance every month in full. And like my budget video I did, you got to budget yourself. You got to pay attention to these things. You got to budget yourself to a way that you know what your credit cards are going to be. You don't want them to overdraw your account and spend, you never want to spend more than you're taking in. It's basic. If you take in between say two and $4,000 a month, you don't go over that. It's simple. You, you try to stay under that. You try to save, you know, 10 to 20% of that if you can, uh, and then stay under that threshold with your spending. And remember, if all else fails, if you don't have the money to do it, don't. So there's, there's plenty of, and this is hard for people, I think, because I mean, as Americans, we are a very spoiled country. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, but there's plenty of ways to entertain yourself in a simple way. Like there's so many, I mean, you can go ride a bike, you can go join a gym, you can go walk. It's so good for your mental health and your clarity. You don't need to do things that cost money. Like there's so many free things that you can do. I mean, you can even buy cheap streaming services, watch stuff on TV, but there's so many like, just free things you can do activity wise. I mean, you can, like I say, bike ride, walk, run, buy some skates, you know, skateboard, I mean, whatever. And it's totally free, you, go, you know, go walk in a park, go, go, you know, go play an intramural sport or something. Um, 
things like that. So with that being said, now credit age, here's what happens with this. This one can bite you early on because like for me, it says four years and three months. And I just told you, if you were paying attention that between six and seven years, I've been establishing my credit rating. But what happens is that when those pesky creditors close these accounts that you're not using, uh, then your average age of credit drops. So let's explore this one here. Now, as you saw there, it has a medium impact. So it's not the highest weighting. Um, actually, my oldest account is nine years. Uh, newest account, one month. Average age, four years and three months. Um, getting a little personal here. I don't want to go. I don't want to scroll down any further. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what happens. It's an average of all of your lines of credit. Total accounts, we looked at that. Derogatory marks. If you're paying everything on time, you're not going to have to worry about collections or tax liens or any of these things that it says here. Uh, just pay your bills on time, pay the statement balance in full. Try to keep your statements between 150, 200, 250, maybe no more than 500. Just make sure you can pay it off every month. And again, this is like a, it's, it's a skill you have to develop. It's not physical, but it's like mental. It's a mind game. Like you got to look at life as a game and you got to play it right. And that's, uh, that comes into play with this. So let's look at credit usage. I guess statistically it's got it at zero. Um, ooh, showing a little personal information here. Well, I mean, I, I have a high uh, credit uh, limit, but so it's like, I'm using 583 out of that. And, and really the main one I'm using, I'm putting everything on that US bank card because I'm trying to reach that promo now. But what'll happen, like I just paid for something today that was a few hundred dollars. So once that goes on the statement, this is how harsh they are with the credit rating. My rating will drop probably, like if I run that card up to $1,000, my credit rating will probably drop below 800 just because of that. But then once I pay it off the next month, the credit rating comes right back. So let's see, we've reviewed uh, all six of those factors. Uh, with those, you get a pretty good idea. The three highest impacts, credit card usage, payment history, derogatory marks. I've told you what to do is stay in the green there. And uh, let's go back to the main page here. I wanna look at TransUnion because like I say, well, Equifax and TransUnion uh, are different. So I wanna look at, cause one had, had me at an 821, one, one had me at an 804, it was Equifax. So Equifax, and this is the highest this has ever been. This isn't like, oh, I always have had this. Like, I think I just hit 800 this year. But they weight things a little bit differently. See, here's the difference here. Uh, hard inquiries, it's only got it at two. Total accounts are the same. It's got the credit age a little bit higher, 100% payment history. Uh, so almost all of that looks the same, except for the number of hard inquiries. And like I said, those fall off after every two years. Um, but ideally to illustrate, you want to take your, uh, overall credit limit. If it's small, you want to increase it. So what you want to do is I'm a visual learner. And I think a lot of my audience are visual learners too. Your credit limit starts out here. It starts out as like the small dollar amount, right? See, that's shiny. Starts out as a small dollar amount, but you want to raise it to the big, big dollar amount, right? And by the way, I just wanted to say, there's nothing wrong with having fake jewelry. I mean, fake jewelry goes right in hand with the theme of this channel, frugality, right? So I'm saying fake, but I mean, it, I mean, this is real gold. Come on, I mean, look at that shiny real gold. Look how shiny it is. I'm just kidding. But there's nothing wrong with it. It's nice props. I mean, a money channel. You should have some kind of money props, right? But not everybody has the same sense of humor, I guess. So that's the gist of that when it comes to, uh, to credit. And uh, like I say, I never like to pay cash for anything. Oh, here's the Verizon card, by the way. This is a metal card. If you can get this one, put your phone bill on it. Like my iPhone that I use to film some of my stuff. Um, it's really good. 
and they give you a credit for your phone bill. Um, and when I got my phone, I got a Black Friday deal. So um, this phone has really come in handy as far as filming this channel and stuff. And like I said, I uh, deviated from the dividend stuff and uh, I kind of wish I didn't because I'm really liking how well the dividend stuff is doing. I'll just show you here because I, I really appreciate this. I mean, this is phenomenal. Every time I look at this video, it has like 10 more views. The dividend snowball video I did, I mean, I'm averaging like 10 views an hour, which for me, don't laugh, but for me at this stage, that's good. One little hack I did, if you haven't seen that video, I changed the title. So I put starting with $558 into 200,000. And that's what you would do over time with the snowballs. And I got to tell you, like I enjoy YouTube so much more than my day job because I'll just say in my day job, I've never gotten to ride a snowball. And it's fun, I'll tell you. And if you haven't watched that video, you should definitely check it out. Covered call ETFs are one of the things. So with that being said, uh, one little uh, bonus note here for those of you watching all the way to the end. And really, uh, all of you all should definitely watch to the end because I cover a lot of good stuff all the way up to the end. And I have a bonus, uh, a bonus topic here for anybody that has done as I advised and stayed tuned all the way to the end. An Amazon call option. So last week was a great time to buy. And I keep knocking myself because every one of us, no matter how young or old we are, um, we're not getting any younger. I mean, we get older every day, no matter how young or old we are. So it's like every time one of these big opportunities gets missed, I'm like, huh, how many of these am I going to knock myself for missing? But I just want to show you here because not everybody believes in options trading, but this could be a game changing trade if you did this. Oh, look at that. See, this thing hears me because it's got a debt free, the path to debt free college. Oh, that's another thing. You know, I'll do another video on that. But if you go to college, um, you can graduate college debt free. You don't need to get into all student loans and all of that. Like, and I'll tell you how to do that. I won't get into that in this video, but back to the Amazon call option here. So if you look at after the Russia Ukraine uh, conflict started March 14th, this was just a week ago, right? Uh, and it was even lower than this, but this is the $3,000 uh, options, uh, call option expiring this month, uh, $27 and 21 cents. So you know what you do, you multiply by a thousand, right? So if you bought a hundred contracts of this at this strike price, that would be $27,000. Not everybody can do that. But if you looked at the price of it here, $223, do the math on that. You would have turned $27,210 into 223,370. Pretty phenomenal, huh? Let me just confirm here because I did that in my head, but 223.37 strike price times well, that's if you just bought, uh, if you just bought like 10, contra if you just bought one, 22,000. If you bought the 10 contracts, 223.37 times 223.37. Yeah, $223,000 minus your initial investment of, what did I say, 27, 210. Wouldn't that be a nice gain? for one trade, but yeah, most of us in this market wouldn't stomach that risk. So if you missed out on that, join the club because I think most everybody probably did. Well, with that being said, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and comment. And thanks so much for staying tuned in all the way to the end. And uh, my next video I'm gonna put out on real estate and that real estate mistake. And I want you to all learn from that when you see it, it's gonna be great. Thanks so much, have a good night.